2007's Enchanted Review and Thoughts in honor of Women's History Month. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. There are aspects of it that are problematic. I'm going to try to explore those. This video will have a number of jokes, none of them expensive members of minorities. And we'll get into some serious topics. And uh, if you're looking for a view that is like the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by little movies because of that, it's not that much fun to watch today. Whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I decide over the course of it that I do want to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn for do so and hold up an index finger. So you can mute and skip ahead and choose to see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the video itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. And let's see, so... Um, yeah, the, yes, I'm a lifelong feminist, but I am an Alosis hat man. As such, I've never lived life as a woman, cis or trans. I try to show empathy, listen to the lived experience of women. I am aware I have dead spots. As such, I might accidentally say something ignorant. So if any feminist woman is bothered by something I say in one of my videos, please let me know. I'm open to editing that part out. And if it's a case where the whole video is bad, taking it down. And everything I say about any minority that I don't belong to, which is all of them, is based on what I've heard left-leaning members of those minorities say, for example, in YouTube videos. So this movie is rated PG, like a lot of the Disney animated, you know, that it's playing with the, the tropes of. And, yeah, they, they do quite a good job of... You know, it, it never felt like the movie was just begging to be... I, I know some people think that it, it should have been a PG-13. You know, gone further. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. So, yeah, the, the PG rating, the reason it's not just rated G, is some scary images and mild innuendo, according to the MPAA. Now, the IMDb Parents Guide rates sex and nudity and violence and gore as mild... Let's see, profanity, alcohol, drugs, and smoking is none, and right, and frightening and intense scene as mild. And let's see, which you know, it it is fascinating that this originally was going to be like an R-rated raunchy comedy. I I don't blame Disney the company for not going with that. I'm I'm really not part of me kind of wants to oh all right and yes and this video will also be rated PG. Kind of part of me kind of does want to to see what that movie would even look like. Um but I'm not I'm not super unhappy that that wasn't what we got here. Now, I have watched this movie once. I record this right after finishing my viewing, so it's fresh in my mind. And let's see. So, yeah. Um, for plot, I'm just going to quote IMDb here. A young maiden in a land called Andalasia, who is prepared to be wed, is sent away to New York City by an evil queen where she falls in love. And let's see. The... I think that might be about what I have for that. Yes, here we go. So, right. Um, this has been compared to movies like Hoodwinked and Shrek. So I'm just briefly going to rank the ones I've watched of those worst to best. Hoodwinked 2, the only bad one I've seen so far. Shrek 1, Hoodwinked 1, and Shrek 2. Yes. I am aware a lot of people prefer Shrek to Hoodwinked One. And let's see. Yes, yeah, so this was written by Bill Kelly. And yeah, this is actually this is one of the only movies he's he's written. Um he has five credits. One of them's this, one of them's the video game, and it just says based on the movie story by. So I'm not sure he wrote anything new for that. And Disenchanted, which I'm not currently planning on doing, the the sequel to this, 
I'm I'm open to it. You know, if someone really badly wants me to to cover that movie, you know, leave you know, yeah, let me know in the comments. I'm I'm fine with doing it. I'm just not currently planning on it. But but yeah, other than that, yeah, Disenchanted. It just says based on characters created by. He didn't write that one. The the other two, the only two movies he wrote before this one, the only other ones he's written at all are Blast from the Past, about a guy who comes out into the world after spending thirty five years in a nuclear fallout shelter. That one's PG thirteen. I see how the and it's yeah, it's Brendan Fraser. I one hundred percent see how. I haven't watched the movie, but I get how I, I get how that fits what Brendan Fraser used to do. I don't know if he does it so much anymore in his you know you know the the whale brought him back, and you know I'm looking forward to seeing more of his. I thought he was amazing in that, but but yeah, back in the nineties that was you know yeah. This was the the kind of thing that he he did, and yeah, I, I do see how because you know the in this the protagonist is Giselle. She's also quite naive, and we have this fish out of water thing. And then he wrote the 2007 PG-13, you know, premonition, the the Sandra Bullock movie where, yeah, I I remember seeing trailers for this. It's, you know, yeah, basically, like, it's it's this thing of, you know, yeah, is is her, is someone in her life actually dead or not? She she's having dreams that, yeah. I mean, I I remember it was kind of a joke at the time. You know, we were like, how many of of these movies are they gonna make where, you know, someone perceives something and it's not quite you know this was around the you know we we'd already had the the I can't believe I'm blanking on the name I I know who's in it so I'll find a right and that's not the right one so yeah it stars Julianne Moore it's from 2004 um right around here the forgotten you know and there it's it's her child not yeah they they did too many of those movies back then so what i'm getting at is i can't really comment on if this is you know very common for a bill kelly screenplay now the director is kevin lima he has worked in the the you know animation department. He has a number of credits for animation department. Uh, let's see, one upcoming and fifteen previous. You know, as far back as eighty five and as recent at tw as twenty nineteen, and again one upcoming. And yeah, some of them are indeed Disney animated. Uh, let's see. So it's Pocahontas, Lion King. I forget if Rover Danger. I don't think that one is Disney, but yeah. Um, Little Mermaid, Oliver and Company, Brave Little Toaster, Great Mouse Detective. So, so yeah, several. Black Cauldron. Yeah, I don't remember if all of these are Disney, but you know, that's why he, you know, yeah, he did. He he directed a Goofy movie and Tarzan, which you know animated. This was one of his first live action, not the very first. Before this, he directed 102 Dalmatians, a movie I'm pretty sure 90% of you were just like, either there's 102 Dalmatians or, oh no, I thought I, I thought that was a horrible nightmare. You know, honestly, I have seen worse. Not many, but some. Uh, Glenn Close does do, you know, she she goes for it in in it, you know, gotta gotta give her credit. Like she she read the script, she must have known that it wasn't, you know, um, yeah, it's not a particularly good movie. Um, I do appreciate it, you know, if you've never seen it, the the one scene in it that you know, I'll I'll find it real quick. So, two Dalmatians. Um, 
let's see, it's the, yeah, um, yeah, if you just do a, a search right here on YouTube, it's called Ella, parentheses, Cruella is back, uh, you know, and yeah, that, that scene is legitimately quite something, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's nightmare fuel, don't watch it if, if you, you know, don't, don't, yeah, just be be seated before before you watch it, so you don't faint. But I I can appreciate you know there was like it's a it's it's fairly creative of of a yeah. So I am very happy to say this. He Kevin Lima does significantly better here. Part of it is also the screenplay. The screenplay for 102 Dalmatians is terrible. The one for this one is excellent. And, yeah, while I acknowledge that most, possibly all, have some problematic aspects, some of them are even deeply offensive, I can't deny I love all animated Disney I've seen, which is everything up to and including Tarzan, as well as, though none since that, none in between, Tangled. I am working my way through those. I decided to review this before watching those since it does not appear that it satirizes any that came out after Tarzan. It you know, it it seems to be primarily the the let's see. Yeah. Um you know, it's especially the the really really you know, the the very early animated Disney classics. You know, stuff like Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, and I feel like there's one more, um, Cinderella. You know, it's especially those. And, let's see. And, and yeah, um, it does have a very similar perspective on gender as the, yeah, aforementioned Disney classics. I've also watched the... Yeah, pretty much everything I've just said is also true of, of Pixar. I've watched up to and including Toy Story 4. So, you know, not a huge amount left that... Yeah. Um, this mines a lot of comedy in its satire of early animated Disney. It does not particularly target Disney's renaissance, which began with 89's Little Mermaid. By this point and onwards, Disney princesses tended to be more active, dynamic characters who stood up for themselves, actively pursued their goals. Princess Giselle in this movie is a Disney animated princess of the sort that we had seen before Little Mermaid, the kind we see with Snow White, Cinderella, and Aurora. You know, she's a good woman because she's passive. She loves woodland critters. They love her back. She's domestic, gentle. It came out at a time when these had been criticized significantly. Excellent YouTuber The Take has, in recent years, pointed out that some of this was somewhat undeserved. You know, for sure, there are some very regressive messages in, in some of those. But the problem mainly lies in the idea that it's the only way to be a good woman. There are actually positive values for young women that want this more traditional life. We have to be careful that feminism does not end up limiting in the opposite direction and saying every woman has to have a career. Like, to be clear, financial independence is very healthy. Equality in relationship in general, you know, let's see. But yeah, if, ironically, in that regard, this movie has not actually aged that much better than the movies it provides meta commentary on and it is very much a product of its time just like they were with you know right with that said it is incredibly funny and you know yeah it, it is this thing of like other than the regressive stuff which obviously should not be just ignored yeah who doesn't want to live in this kind of you know, even even if you don't agree with this vision of, of true love and such, just, like, this idea of a world where, you know, yeah, there's there's harmony, and, you know, like, one of the first, when, when Giselle comes to New York, she's very trusting. She doesn't understand that, you know, if you encounter a stranger, they might, you know, yeah, you have to be careful, you know. And, and, yeah, the constant singing and dancing, just, like, don't get me wrong, I 
and and you know my my exes can you know attest to this i can't dance you know i'm i'm willing to make an effort if if it'll make you know the love of my life happy that i make an effort but i'm not good at it i would learn you know i would find a way to learn if the the if if i found if if i one day woke up and i was in an animated disney classic you know just yeah and the let's see yeah and also just these ideas of you know yeah it's it's yeah um moving on the yeah every time i see james marsden out of character i find myself wanting to see him in an actual comedy a movie where he gets to be funny you know like i love him in in x men i i know i'm the only one but I think it's primarily because every time I see him, I, I think of, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff where he's like... He he does a killer impersonation of Famke Janssen, for example. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, she's not, not like, behind her back. She She's in the footage laughing at the impersonation. I have no idea if it's an accurate impersonation, but it is very funny. And not because it's a man making fun of a woman. Uh, I don't even remember him... <laughs> Disturbing behavior. Yeah, I guess he is in disturbing behavior, isn't he? I don't think I watched that movie more than once. I barely remember anything about it. It's it's like one of the only places I've seen the, uh, the guy who plays John Connor in Terminator Three. And anyway, um, but but yeah, you know, yes, and Superman Returns also. Um, and, and yeah, one of my friends who also loves Disney said, this movie really delivers. I concur. And let's see. Yeah, this movie truly does feature every single thing that we expect from classic animated Disney. You know, it's an adaptation of a fairy tale. No, not, not a direct. It feels like an adaptation of a fairy tale. It's kind of, it's a bit of a, um, they, they take elements from several different, I suppose if we were to point to one specific, it's perhaps especially Aurora because you know she lives out in the in the forest. Though we we don't really see her living with anyone other than the the maybe the animals that help her. But you know she's not living the the yeah you know the the Snow White and. Um, Cinderella are both living in, in, like, yeah. They're, they're not living in the, in the forest from the very start. Although I suppose, I, yeah, maybe it is, maybe it's more of, you know, cause, cause certainly Snow White does end up living in a forest. Now, the, yes, um, but yeah, other things that features the classic animated Disney has comedy, cuteness, including very marketable animal sidekicks, magic, both good and evil, a deeply memorable female villain motivated by hatred and jealousy directed towards the innocent heroine. And that is, yeah, that is one of those things where, because, like, on the one hand, I kind of do appreciate, you know, some of these... The idea of providing both a positive role model and some you know yeah some something to avoid being like you know so yeah it's just frustrating that so frequently it's stuff like jealousy towards another woman it's about like beauty standards and power and such you know it can send the message to, to people and you know young impressionable minds that a woman seeking power is inherently a bad thing you know yeah I, I do appreciate in this one they they don't bring up the 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 idea of conventional attractiveness it is a, about power you know but yeah and it is the the wicked stepmother yet again Let's see and and that is something I, I do appreciate the you know the movie does have you know does confront the idea of you know our stepmothers just wicked you know 
that's also if you haven't watched the takes video on the the stepmother trope it's absolutely recommended you know they yeah they point out stuff like part of the reason that a lot of you know there, there are fairy tales there are other stories that have you know evil stepmothers it's this idea of you know replacing the mother of you know if if there is a stepmother then that means that the father and mother won't get back together you know because monogamy and she kind of serves as a reminder that happily ever after wasn't forever so back to the the movie the costumes and sets are great although parts of new york certainly look significantly greater than what we're used to seeing there's more snarkasm and let's see yeah and and you know basically the movie you know it's supposed to be this thing of what would happen if you took a disney princess and prince out of the animated wonderland that those take place in put them in modern day new york and yeah, the, the, there are some incredible, catchy, excellent musical numbers and other songs, some sung by major main characters. And Alan Menken and Steven Schwartz do a send up of Menken's own style. And yeah, if you're very familiar with animated Disney, I don't even have to explain what those names. Yeah. I do think it's too bad that evidently audiences here in the West are uncomfortable with live action musicals unless it's making fun of musicals. Like, there's literally a non-zero amount of jokes in the movie about people being uncomfortable with someone else singing in public outside of the context of a traditional performance. I mean, I get it. I've been told my whole life not to like musicals, and for a while it kept me from appreciating the subgenre as much as I do when no one tries to make me feel bad about it. You know, yeah, already mentioned Disney animated classics. In addition, the original Blues Brothers is one of my favorite movies. And, yeah... One of the clever things that they did here is the movie does work as a straight entry. Fans of the classics may love it just for that. Like, I've seen several reviews where they say, oh, you know, eight-year-old girls will love this. And some said, my eight-year-old daughter loved this. You know, because they don't necessarily, you know, the, the snarcasm doesn't necessarily appeal to them. But there's so much stuff, you know, a lot of the time it is played straight enough that yeah if that's what you want then it you know and and yeah this came out after shrek after the first hoodwinked you know so disney were were acknowledging the the yeah this is a a thing that people like sure we'll we'll get in on the on the ground floor you know like Again, love Shrek. You know the, the first two haven't watched the third yet. Love the yeah you know, the the fourth one's perfectly fine. Love the first Hoodwinked. Those two move th those three movies don't particular four movies those movies among those movies they they really don't fit just if you you know th those are for when you want to have a crass laugh. Well, the Shreks are for when you want to have a crass laugh. At Disney anime classics, Hoodwinked does have some of the the magic of of those, but it's not really, you know, it's it's more playing with tropes, you know. I, I if I had watched the first Hoodwink when I was a child, I probably would have liked it, but it wouldn't be the same kind of like. And. Let's see. You know that that is the thing. Like part of the reason that Disney is such a massive wealthy company is, you know, except for when they sometimes really don't. Like they've definitely made some slip ups with recent Star Wars and and MCU. Not because of the progressive stuff. More of that, please. But just yeah, some sometimes they they limit what the creatives are able to do because of. You know they're they're not they're they're sometimes very risk averse, but when Disney, a lot of the time Disney makes decisions that are very based on what is going to to really you know lead to the most success, most profit, most critic, uh, you know, um, yeah, what what is 
what are the critics going to love? There's a lot of stuff in here that isn't necessarily for casual fans, but you know, if you love Disney and or if you're a movie critic that just you know really appreciates when movies yeah, you know, it's it's you know, for those of us who love the medium of film, it's fun when a film takes something from another movie and kind of toys with it. And yeah, you know, the the this is very much one of their many many successes in in that regard. You know, not it doesn't always work out. Sometimes they're they're too careful and it hurts the end product. You know, I I definitely think that the Marvels, which I do still maintain, has a lot to love about it. I think the main problems were that it, you know, they were too, yeah, you know, Disney were too afraid to let it just be itself. And when it is itself, it's fantastic. Now, Patrick Dempsey plays a divorce lawyer in New York. So, yeah, very jaded. And something I, I honestly didn't, I haven't really seen anybody else, you know, talk about this in the, the reviews I've read, but the, I, I feel like there's some, like Giselle is, is partially coded as maybe being on the spectrum, and I'm not 100% certain if that is intentional but just you know she she struggles with emotions especially negative ones she yeah a lot of the time is very optimistic you know she she is very trusting very open you know creative doesn't always understand boundaries doesn't always read social cues well you know I'm, I'm not entirely sure if it is I can imagine it's not so much intentional. It is just, you know, that's what you end up with if you push the the traits of one of these Disney princesses into the, you know, into parody levels. Because I, I didn't really read any of those as as being on the on the spectrum. And some people have taken issue with Idina Menzel. And, and for for good reason, she doesn't really get like a big solo number. She does she does participate in some singing in this, but she doesn't get a a big solo number. And you know, yeah, um, I want to say it's like Broadway where she's really known for, you know, yeah, musical performance. Originally, she was supposed to. In fact, she was supposed to sing the the title song, Enchanted, and they ended up cutting it. Uh, I, f I forget why, but you know, in case you're wondering, if it's, yeah, that that is why it doesn't have her getting a big solo note because it does feel weird. It, there's there's parts of the movie that really feel like oh, you're you're going there, you're building to it, and then it doesn't end up happening. So yeah, this has a fantastic opening. Um, we start in the in the animated world, and just yeah, it really does feel like you know Disney animated classic by way of someone who really hates it and is exaggerating. Like it feels like you know some some bitter miser who got dragged along to one of these movies and is incapable of having fun with something positive and so they are like ah oh, you know there's there's like a million animals and they're like being so obnoxious it's just it's 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 very funny and i'm sure yeah the 8 year old girls probably don't think of it as oh wow they're kind of making fun of some, something i like they probably just think oh, there's so many animals you know so just yeah Let's see. Oh, by the way, can we not do the thing of, oh, you know, only eight-year-old girls like animated Disney? Everybody can find something in animated Disney to love. And when I was growing up, yeah, I loved Disney. You know, Disney, I, I had a bunch of different movies that, you know, animated ones on VHS, because that's how old I am. 
yeah, not all of them were Disney, but the Disney ones were the ones I liked the best. You know, there's there is something in there for everyone. Uh, let's see, and and yeah, the the opening does a really great job setting up. You know, we we see this is what Giselle's life is normally like. And then she gets to New York, and she's trying to live. You know, if you didn't have the opening, you would struggle to understand why Giselle acts the way she does in New York. But you keep seeing, oh, she thinks, yeah, she thinks that things in the real world work just like they do in Andalusia, you know. And I do really appreciate the movie does, which, which is also, you know, it's not like Shrek and Hoodwinked kind of take issue with the idea of the the simplicity and and straightforward you know view of the world of on on love and, and positive relationships and such that that classic animated Disney does. Ultimately this movie does a lot to to kind of reaffirm it kind of just says, you know, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if there was a Disney princess in real life you know, to, to help us appreciate, you know, yeah, positive things in the world. And again, it's it's kind of, it's hard to disagree. It's really just the, the regressive elements that I take issue with. But yeah, um, and that is, of course, something, you know, some people really don't like that the... And, and it, it is very much, it is 100% a having your cake and eating into a movie. It is very much like, ugh. Look at this stuff. Isn't it so ridiculous how, you know, Disney animated classics are just like this? But wouldn't it be kind of cool if that was real life? You know, it's it's very much that. And and for sure, I, I can appreciate that that, you know, it would have been cool if it did take, you know, bigger swings than it does. And, yeah, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. Yeah, I love the ending. And, let's see, I think that might just about... Let's see. So that brings us to... So I've talked some about the cast. Um... Yeah, Amy Adams, fantastic here. This was apparently the thing that really got her noticed. This was not the first time that she did a fantastic performance. I love her in Drop Dead Gorgeous. She is so good. And honestly, I wouldn't rule out that that was part of what got her this one. Because in that, she's also very much this, like, you know, ridiculously positive kind of, you know, just, yeah. Let's see, and the... Oh, wow, I completely... Yeah, she is in Cruel Intentions too, Which I didn't watch. I I uh, heard somebody else talk about... Look, the guy who made the original was involved. I How, how was I supposed to know it was going to be that bad? Oh, that's right, she is in Catch Me If You Can. She's quite good there as well. You know, being charmed by... DiCaprio. Relatable. You know, back, back then he was very charming. Now that we know that he's creepy about, you know, dating only women. Let's see, I think, is it the age 25 is his cutoff day? Or some, something like that. Just get help. But yeah, um, this, this was the, the thing where, this was the role where people really noticed Amy Adams. And she's had quite the career since, so, yeah, and she absolutely nails it, you know, she's she's really good in animated form, she is amazing once they get to live action, and she can put physicality into it, just like, she really does, you know, because I've seen her play roles where she's much, you know, her Lois Lane is much more hardened than her Giselle, you know, very, yeah, that's also right there on the on the page in the script. She's capable of, of you know, displaying negative emotion, but if you just watch this, you wouldn't think, so, like, you, you would find yourself thinking, oh, wow, they just kind of went to a woodland meadow and captured a sprite and grew her to human size, huh? I, I guess. Like, it just, 
constant smile, con you know, breaking into song all the time, and just, yeah, you know, the, the, um, and they find just this great way of making a balance where, because, like, this is the kind of thing, if you push it a little too far, you do end up with, like, okay, she's kind of annoying, can we just, can you take it down a notch, because this is just ridiculous, you know, she gets very close to that line, but she never crosses it. Susan Sarandon, you know, it's a fairly thankless role, but she throws herself into it as Queen Narissa, the wicked stepmother. And that's not a spoiler. That's we're told that like right at the very start. And you know, the movie does open with a, a storybook opening, just like several of the the animated Disney classic fairy tale adaptations. But but yeah, you know, she absolutely goes for it. She she gets like I'm sure she grew up on you know some of these animated Disney, you know, probably showed her kids some of the older ones and so on and so forth. So she 100% understands. And and yeah, you know, I wouldn't have minded if she got a little bit more screen time. With that said, yeah, I mean, she is up there with Maleficent and uh, Lady Tremaine. Was she called that in the original or was that later ret retcon? Whatever, you know, the, the various... Yeah, you know, just, like, you know, she's not quite, like, Ursula, but that's also, like, that's a high bar. You know, let's not get complete, but no, if, you know, if you haven't watched, if, if it's been a little while since you watched, you know, well, yeah, the Maleficent, Maleficent movies are also pretty good. I wish they, again, really wish they just took harder swings, but I do appreciate what's there. You know, and, and yeah, um... I don't need to tell you that Angelina Jolie is is just spellbinding when she gets a meaty role to really sink her teeth into. You know that because you've seen a movie. But but yeah, just the yeah, you know the the around the level of a uh, Maleficent, and there's also some definite like she's very much. There, there are some very direct references to, to Maleficent with her character. James Marsden, just like, yeah, he's so good as Prince Edward. Again, just like big smile on his face and like constantly like, I must go rescue, you know, aha, foul beast, you will fell by my sword. You know, just really goes for it. So much fun. Uh, I've, I've, I would love to see him in, in more roles like, like this. And yeah, Patrick Dempsey does quite well. You know, he's a lot of the time he's the straight man, so that of course limits how much he's able to be, you know, fun. No, I haven't watched Grey's Anatomy. I don't have any problem with it. I know that he's very, very popular for for what he did on there. Oh, that's right. He's in Scream Three. No, yeah, he was very good in in somewhat similar roles. I I don't know if he just. It, maybe it's just that I keep ending up watching stuff where he plays roles like this, or if he actually does a lot of of stuff like this. But yeah, you know, he it's very very tight buttoned up kind of, you know. Huh? Oh, that is him. Yeah. Uh, Bridget Jones. He's also yeah. You know, he's, yeah, I think that is just, like, he, you know, buttoned up, you know, needs a, a good woman to bring him out of his shell kind of thing. And, yeah, he does really well, uh, you know, the, the, considering how much of the movie is him not going along with the fun stuff, yeah, you know, you could very easily end up with him just being, unbearable just like come on let's stop doing that you know kind of thing and again they find a balance you know there's just enough there the you know they set up very early on you know he used to believe in love but it's you know maybe not so much more anymore so there is that you know yeah we find ourselves hoping you know maybe Giselle can wake that back up in him maybe he can feel you know really strong romantic love again you know, Timothy Spall plays Nathaniel. He is, he works for Nerissa, 
and he is supposed to prevent Edward from marrying Giselle. Uh, you know, because if if Edward, being a prince, marries, he becomes king, and then Queen Nerissa no longer has, you know, yeah, she's no longer the, the ruler. I wish that they had, because it's, it's right there. Just make it, make it clear that he wouldn't be that great of a ruler, at least not the way he is right now, so that it feels like she's worried that he's going to ruin the kingdom. But no, basically they go with, you know, she wants power, which, you know, it's, it's that thing of, like, misogynists feel that, oh, you know, if a woman wants power, oh, you got to be careful. But if a man wants power, oh, that's ambition. That's, you know, women gossip, men, like, network. You know, it's, it's, it's this ridiculous double standard where if a woman does it, suddenly it's bad. And if, you know, for, for misogynist men to be able to do something, they have to make sure, like, you know, the, the, it's, it's like, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a dog that's, that's inside and just like walking around before it, it lies down. You know, it's like, what, what are you doing? There's no, there's nothing there. You don't have to do this. Why are male massages so freaked out at the idea that something they like might be feminine? It's so ridiculous. Cause like, you know, I know they would say, oh, you know, it's feminine is worse. You, you know. You say it's worse. It's not actually worse. You know, if every male misogynist woke up tomorrow and decided, you know what, feminine isn't worse, the rest of us would not be like, oh, you know, this is terrible. What are you doing? We'd just be like, finally, thank you. We've been, that's what we've been trying to tell you. But yeah, um, to get back to Nathaniel, you know, he really wants to, to please Nerissa and yeah you know he's he's the one trying to he's he's always trying to, to you know get edward to go in the wrong direction and you know to to take giselle out of the equation and let's see yeah and idina menzel plays nancy tremaine and she does quite well i think they could have done more with the role but maybe there would have been more if she'd gotten to do the the solo but the um, yeah you know she's she's great again if you if you are familiar with other work by her you already know this and let's see yeah uh, Rachel Covey plays Morgan Philip so the the daughter of uh, Robert and basically she is the She's the one who is trying to, to, like, she wants him to have a more optimistic worldview, and he's trying to, to make her more jaded. And, yeah, that's, you know, that's the, the conflict there. And let's see. Yeah, and Julie Andrews is, is the narrator. F fantastic choice. Again, you know, some, sometimes the obvious choice is the right choice. Right, and Kevin Lima, in addition to directing, actually plays... He, he voices the... the um, yeah, this uh, this takes a little setup. What else did he play? Oh, that's right, yeah. He also did a voice in a goofy movie. And the wonderful world of Disney, but it says Kevin, so that might... He might just be playing himself. Anyway, um... So yes, Pip is a chipmunk, and in Andalasia, chipmunks, chipmunks can talk. All animals can talk. In New York, they can't. So he, you know, he has to do like charades and such to communicate. And yeah, they get some really great stuff. Really expressive animation, CG on on this, you know. And yeah, Kevin Lima voices Pip in New York. Right, and, and yeah, Fred Tetasiore voices a troll, really, I don't think I want to give too much away about, it's just, I'll just say there's a lot of fun stuff with, it, it doesn't have a huge amount of screen time, but what when it's there, it's, it's very funny. And, yeah, um, 
diversity. So this was not the best time for positive representation of ethnic minorities and such. Um, there's not a lot of African Americans and one of the more prominent, one of the ones you really remember. Yeah, really, honestly, I think pretty much every major African American who appears in this is like loud and, and verbally aggressive in in a way that you don't see as much with the the you know white characters so yeah that's you know and and it really it really didn't have to to be that way you could easily have had at least one of them not be you know i do appreciate at, at the very least you know at first i thought oh it's just going to be angry black women there are angry black men as well which eh, I don't know, makes it much better but and and I will say, at least some of the African Americans who, for some of the movie, are very verbally aggressive, you know, we do see that there's more to them. I just wish that it wasn't so much the, the African American characters who were verbally aggressive. Um, yeah, I... There's other issues where it's kind of... There's some... Pearl clutching, you know, middle class white people anxieties about certain groups of people. Uh, I don't know if I want to give too much. Away. I'll talk about it in the spoiler section, but just, yeah. Um, and it really didn't need to be that way. They, they could easily have had, because, like, ultimately, like, from very early on, this is not a spoiler, we do get the sense that, like, Edward is almost too, like, cartoonish. In like you know, it, there there is this sense of you know, like I don't I don't know if I'm loving the idea. I I think at the very least he would have to go through some growth before he would make a, a good king. Not that we should have royalty at all, but you know, given that the movie is saying you know, it's not uh, about abolishing the the royal family. The dialogue is great. Um, just, yeah. Um, there's there's 70 entries in the IMDb quote section, and all of them are worth looking up. Um, I only skimmed, but I believe all of them are, are also good. Just, they, they really get each character. Every, like, it's one of those things where you could read a line completely out of context, divorced from, you know, oh, it's, it's this character saying it, and you'd be like, oh, this is definitely that character saying it and I you know I have a sense of when in the movie they would be saying that kind of thing and yeah you know well written well delivered and the cinematography is fantastic um, if you've never had the pleasure of watching a live-action musical if you at all think that it would be your kind of thing you know treat yourself it's just the the yeah when they're good the filming is just yeah just amazing and and this one this is gonna sound like blasphemy but honestly there are parts in some some of the musical bits in this actually do reach the level of the blues brothers like it's that freaking good it's just the the massive you know yeah huge crowd of of people dancing and the way the the camera captures that and like some sweeping shots and just yeah you know there's a yeah there's a scene in this where just ah, i don't is it a spoiler to give up i'll just say there's at least one scene in this with a, a musical performance in live action and it's just amazing it's it's honestly i just that one scene is almost so good that I would recommend watching even watching the entire movie, even if you're not 100% sold on the rest of it. And let's see, yeah, the editing is also quite good. It really captures the the flow, uh, you know, the the various conversations and yeah, the the tense moments. You know, there are exciting, you know, it's it's PG level excitement, but you know, I already told you you have. Nathaniel trying to take Giselle out of the equation and like the audience knows that that's what's happening and Pip has uh, you know 
a role to play in in trying to keep Giselle safe. But you know, the, the Giselle herself doesn't always, you know, she's very trusting, and sometimes the people around her are also very trusting. And Nathaniel, like, they do this running gag where he's like shockingly good at getting into places that are like really beneficial for him in trying to carry out the, the you know the evil plan of Queen Narissa but also it's like you call that a disguise like who, who would buy that you know it's the uh, ma magical realism kind of thing you know it's not it's not quite the the real world and let's see yeah that brings us to the See, yeah, this has the the budget was estimated to be eighty five million, and the let's see, yeah, the, the U.S. and Canada gross was one hundred twenty seven mil, and worldwide three hundred forty and a half mil. So yeah, this was quite the the success, and. And, and again, like, you know, some people went just for live-action musicals. Some people went for Disney magic. Some people went to laugh at Disney magic. It, it has something for everyone. And it is indeed shot in various places around New York City. And, yeah, it, it adds a lot of authenticity. I'm sure New Yorkers probably could recognize certain spots. And let's see, right, and and yeah, um, honestly, the the tense moments do a pretty good job of like there's just enough variety to the different, which like early on it might sound like oh it's just kind of gonna be, you know, the same thing over and over. No, they do a pretty good job coming up with with different scenarios, like basically, you know. Nathaniel is constantly trying to take Giselle out of the equation in one way or another, and and yeah, there's you know the the they play out slightly differently all of them, and yeah, uh, all of the music, all of the score. Like I'm gonna be humming a bunch of the songs in this for a long time. Just yeah, absolutely amazing. And 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 you know the the songs also this thing of you know yeah you can you can laugh at Disney poking fun at Disney, but you can also just take it at face value. And yeah, some really excellent sound design that really helps bring the world to life. Right, and the let's see that brings us to the. Yes, the movie is, uh, let's see, 99 minutes if you don't count the end credits, and if you do count them, it is 107 and a half minutes. And yeah, it's a very quick sit, it doesn't waste any time, it gets right to the point, and yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't really say there were any parts of it that I didn't like quite as much. Um, I've seen some say that they did not like some of the later parts. They liked some of the some of the setup more than some of the growth, and I can see what they mean. And let's see. Right. Uh, yeah. Some have said you know it's somewhat predictable, and it it definitely is. If you know. If you really don't like um, classic animated Disney, some parts of this will have you rolling your eyes. Not all of it is is making fun of it. You know, it's it's basically this thing of they hope that those parts won't bother you quite enough that you won't like the the whole. But yeah, uh, the best elements, you know, it's it's genuinely charming. The performances, especially Amy Adams. And just, yeah, you know, live live action animated Disney in a way that isn't, like, you know, it's, it's, I think Disney should just make stuff more like this, where it's, like, playing with tropes, instead of the, like, you know, 
again, I don't, I don't have to tell anybody this. Most of the the live action dis, most of the ones I've seen, I haven't watched all of them yet, but most of the ones I've seen have just been like, you know, Pinocchio, Dumbo. Uh, um, I feel like there's one more that wasn't, but but yeah, um, you know, I I did ju I just watched the the. Um, the Jungle Book one, the the John Favreau Jungle Book one, that one I I did think was was pretty decent. You know, they they added a few things that really worked for it. Um, and I did think the the um, they made that uh, uh, Cinderella one. I thought that one worked, but you know. A lot of them, it's it's maybe especially the ones where there are like animals and they have to animate the animals and they go so far to make the animals 100% photorealistic that we end up with these not very expressive faces and it's like, what what's the point then? Why are we watching animals that don't have expressive faces in, in, a, in a Disney story, you know? Just, yeah. Um... Yeah, um, so the worst aspect is tied between too little and too negative diversity, you know, negative, yeah, the, the characters who are from non-white, non-male backgrounds are d depicted as being inherently lesser. You know, that's one of the things, and the other, you know, ultimately, the movie does feel somewhat like it's just trying to improve the brand image without having to do the hard work of actually changing what they do for the better. But, you know, the, yeah, there are worse problems for a movie to have than, you know, I, I do really take issue with the, the depiction of minorities being so negative, but... Yeah, the brand image doesn't bother me quite as much as, let's see, and, and, you know, after all, they have started making more dynamic female leads in animated Disney, and, let's see, um, yeah, as, for the, for what others have criticized, there's this really great, I'm just going to quote this directly. So this is Nick Shager from Slant Magazine, who says, Eventually peddles the same old ass backwards messages, equating physical beauty with goodness and positing that a woman's greatest dream is that a hunk will materialize out of thin air and make her a contented homemaker and wife. Yeah. And let's see. Yeah, so the thing I was most worried about was that it would play it too safe. And yeah, ultimately, I do think that it could have gone further. And the, yeah, the thing I was most looking forward to was the performances of Amy Adams and James Marsden. And yeah, it exceeded my expectations. You know, I've been told, people have been telling me about this movie for 17 years now, you know. I don't think I was ever, I don't, I never really had an issue with it, but now that I have Disney Plus, it's like it's right there, you know, I don't have to pay anything extra to be able to watch it. I think that was probably the main thing. I haven't been able to find it on sale. The trailer does give at least a little bit too much away, but does also give you a good idea of what the movie is like. The cover and poster do not give too much away and somewhat give you an idea of what the movie is like. And that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where it has a 93% from critics and an 80% audience score. And the Let's see, 93%. There's 193 reviews, only 14 rotten. The average score is 7.30 out of 10. And the 80% audience score is based on more than 250,000 ratings and an average of 4 out of 5. 
The Consensus, a smart reimagining of fairy tale tropes that's sure to delight children and adults. Enchanted features witty dialogue, sharp animation, and a star turn by Amy Adams. And on Metacritic, it has a 75 out of 100 from critics, based on 32 critic reviews, only four of them mixed and zero negative. And users have given an 8.2 out of 10 based on 233 user ratings. 194 of them positive, 32 mixed, only seven negative. And let's see, there are 31 user reviews. Um, let's see. I think that. Um, okay, one yeah, one mixed reviewer said the original concept wears off easily, relies completely onto it throughout the course of the feature. Um, let's see, one person says I feel more disconnected than enchanted, despite some delightful sequences. And one. It's, yeah, this barely even sounds like a mixed review. Uh, they got a lot of positive things to say. The one negative thing they say is the action is somewhat unbeneficial. Yeah, I can see what they mean. Um, yeah, one person says it's predictable, lots of corny scenes. That is, you know, that would make someone not like it so much. And then we have a review that doesn't say anything. Uh, just, you know, didn't like it. Um, yeah, absolutely nothing to, to glean from, from that one. Um, hmm. um, okay, so this, this person gave it a 3 out of 10, saying, I realized they already shown all the funny bits in the trailer. The movie was horribly cheesy. Sounds like fairly little to give it a 3 out of 10, but okay. Um, but yeah, almost everybody who left a user review on, IMDb, on Metacritic was positive. Left a positive review. There we go. And you have the words. You make them a sentence. There are currently on IMDb 484 user reviews, or 359 if you hide spoilers. I read the top voted 100 of the spoiler free ones, and of those, no one gave it a 1, 2, 3, or 4. Only one person gave it a 5, 3 gave it a 6, 9 gave it a 7, 31 gave it an 8, 30 gave it a 9, and 29 gave it a 10. This movie found its audience. Very much so, and it has a overall rating of 7.1 out of 10 based on 217,000 user ratings. 27.2% gave it 7, 21.5 gave it 8, 15.3 gave it 6, 12.1 gave it 10, another 12.1 gave it 9, 6.3 gave it 5, 2.5 gave it 4. 1.2 gave it 3, another 1.2 gave it 1, and 0 0.7 gave it 2. So yeah, some people really, really hated it, but the vast majority thought it was really good or even amazing. There are 231 links in the IMDb External Reviews section. The special effects were quite good. This was, you know, 2007, there were some movies that were careful to not push it too far, I would say it's very rare for this movie to push it too far past what they can make look good. You know, certainly it's not it's not all like photorealistic, but it's not supposed to be. You know, the it is this heightened reality, but the CG very very rarely, almost never feels like we're just watching CG, like it's not actually there. And, yeah, so the, you know, as mentioned, the movie doesn't have violence. It manages to be tense, uh, even without that. And even sometimes there is a little bit of, of action. It's just the kind of action that doesn't, yeah, 
you know, no no one is like grievously injured or something. Yeah. Um I rate this seven self-aware magical adventures out of ten. If not for the negative depiction of minorities, it would probably be an eight. It's very, very close to an eight, but there's just you know, if it was like once, but there's yeah, there's a bunch of there's maybe half a dozen different things where we're yeah. Um I think that is what I... So yes, uh, I definitely do think the movie holds up. And the... You know, I, I mean, the fact that it got a sequel 15 years down the line, you know, clearly there was still quite the, the audience. The sequel has not been quite as well received. And yeah, um... I think overall ranking the yeah um, yeah updating my ranking worst to best Hoodwink 2 and from here on I love the rest Enchanted Shrek 1 Hoodwink 1 Shrek 2 because ultimately it's just not quite as you know I 100% understand why some people hate the, the Shrek movies but I do think you know and, and certainly you know there is a. I can appreciate that. At the very, I, I did. I honestly don't remember that much about the second, but the first one, they didn't need to go quite that hard. Uh, like it really does feel like, oh wow, this was made by someone who hates the the Disney brand and their their image for you know fairy fairy tale adaptations. And yeah, you know the the I, f I forget what his name is, but there was that guy who worked at Disney and then, you know, left Disney on not the best terms and then went and made Shrek. So, you know, that is part of it. It is very much, you know, screw you, I quit energy. And yeah, I appreciate that that is not everyone's cup of tea. But what it sets out to do, it really nails, you know. And, yeah. Um, you know, as others have pointed out, the Shrek movies just have more bite to them when it comes to the satire of animated Disney fairy tale adaptations than this does. And that does help some. The, at the end of the day, this one is still a little bit too safe. It's It's like... It's like a, a comedy roast, but someone like told them, okay, but you can't make fun of this thing. It's, it's like Trump's comedy roast. And yeah, that brings us to the spoiler section. So from here on out, there will be massive spoilers for everything in the movie. I might talk about the ending early, so here we go. Yes, uh, notes taken while watching. So, let's see, yeah, um, when we meet Giselle, she's literally like, oh, I, I dreamt about this man that, you know, is the love of my life. Now, you know, let's, let's build a, a, let's build a statue of what he looks like, you know, because that, yeah, that, that's bordering on creepiness, you know, that's like, okay, um, I think you might need a hobby. You know, this is not super healthy. You know, the, like if she already met him in real life, this would still be a little weird. But she literally just dreamt, you know, and like in the actual Disney animated classics, she'll be like singing about it or something, but actually building, a, you know, and it doesn't quite, it doesn't go past a, a PG, you know, like the kids are not going to think this is, you know, but, but, us adults, you know, it it our mind goes places when we see someone building a. It's it's even the right it's it's life size, you know. It's not just that oh she built like a a little doll or something. No, she made a a thing of the of the right size, yeah. 
And yeah, we get the first of several excellent parody songs. And I do really appreciate, like, it's extremely funny. Um, but it does actually also, yeah, it's true. It's, you know, physical affection is extremely important. Uh, you know, th there are some people for whom that is not. You know, there are some people who are in long term romantic, you know, yeah, long term relationships who don't want physical affection. If that's what they express, obviously respect that. But for a lot of people, you know, yeah, the, the, um, yeah, physical affection is really, really, you know, yeah, is a really positive thing. You know, there's there's some young men who apparently think, oh, you know, you should you should barely touch the the woman you're with, and it's like, but that's that's such a, yeah, just not gonna go off on a thing. Um, let's see, and yeah, and you know, she's like, oh, we need you know, we need a little a bit more help. We need more animals. It sticks her head out the 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 window vocalizes and like just the entire forest converges on this tiny little hut you know just yeah and and I appreciate you know the the one of one of the animals hands her like an apple for the for the lips and you know she's not completely happy with it and then she takes the worm from inside the apple and makes that the lips which is also just like mm, maybe not the best choice and I love that the the you know the worm like peels off slightly from the from the statue and gives her a look like, are you serious right now? You know that was that was quite funny. Which is also you know because in these movies the animals never have any problem. You know they're just which to be fair she takes you know the the these Disney princesses tend to take very good care of the animals. You know the and and that is something I think you know yeah it. It is a good thing to engender, you know, not only girls, but, yeah, young people, yeah, you know, take care of the, the, those who are weak, you know, because obviously animals in the real world, and, you know, now that we humans run the world, animals don't have the kind of power that we humans do, and, and, yeah, taking care of them when they need it is legitimately a very, very positive thing. Let's see, and then we have the yeah. There's some some great stuff with the the troll. Um, you know, Edward is literally introduced riding in on because uh, like at first you think oh you know he's riding in on like his, his you know trusty steed. No, he's riding in on the troll that he caught. You know, just yeah. And we get some gross out jokes with, uh, you know, Nathaniel trying to, to not... I, that, I do appreciate that they did not have Timothy Spall do that in live action, that that's animation, you know. He keeps accidentally sticking a hand or a foot inside one of the, the trolls, yeah. And that, again, that's not the kind of thing you would see in a, a classic... You know, they, they don't tend to be quite that and and it is still something you can get away with at least in 2007 on a PG let's see and yeah um Edward and Giselle literally discover each other because they're both singing you know that is and that actually is yeah like um I want to say, is it Snow White who's like singing, and then the prince hears and joins in the song? Let's see, and and then the troll starts singing because it's catchy, you know, it's just catchy music. And let's see, then we have the right, and the, yeah, um, so the the troll's giant eyeball right in front of the the window. And, you know, Giselle has her back to it, and the animals are like, I, 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 I what? <laughs> Which, yeah, you know, it sounds like, oh, just don't, don't be nervous, you know, what, what are you trying to say? You, you know, <laughs> just, yeah. You know, it's, it sounds like they're stammering out of, out of nervousness, and, and she's like, you, you know, you don't have, to, it's, it's okay, you, you know, to, just tell me. And and yeah, um, the the two 
engage in a in a duet and and also just great action as the you know yeah he she falls and he catches her and that of course happens again in the real world but with you know Robert catching her which is of course supposed to tell us oh they're going to end up together and and it's, it's one of those things where you know the kids may not know for sure but they just hope for it and the movie delivers the adults who you know we're a bit more cynical and jaded yeah we're like Ugh, I bet they're gonna end up you know and if you don't have a stone for a heart you might just end up finding you know oh that is kind of sweet you know I did think and I'm really glad that that Nancy and Edward end up together I really don't think that either of them deserve to not have a happy ending even if neither was maybe completely right for the for Giselle and Robert and let's see yeah I love the you know so the so the animals are supposed to you know yeah they're the the, the car opens and it's like a clown car there's a an absolutely impossible amount of, of animals to to come and that again you know if you actually think about like the the because a lot of these you know a lot of the time yeah there's a, a bunch of animals but they're in like a, a specific place where that's maybe more seen as acceptable imagine if there was this wedding and the animals are arriving in in a vehicle like they're they're just guests at the wedding you know? and you know, c context matters a lot with comedy. And yeah, um, Sarandon as a, a crone is legitimately very compelling. And let's see, honestly, when, when she, you know, she asks Giselle, have you made a wish? And then Giselle, Giselle says, yes. I thought that Nerissa was going to be like, me too, before, you know, knocking her in, but yeah and they did a really great job making New York really you know unpleasant just yeah people are constantly shoving her and and she yeah there's a there's a dwarf and you know it ends up under her dress which again you know like the kids just think that's not where you're supposed to be as adults, you know, again, our mind goes in a place that we'll tell the kids about when they're older. But, you know, it's it's not quite, it doesn't go so far that it's, you know, unacceptable for, well, by 2007 standards. I'm not sure that I would necessarily want it in a movie today, but, you know, again, of its time. And, and yeah, you know, a dwarf. And, yeah, he's he's, of course, annoyed because of the situation. And she thinks it's grumpy. <laughs> and she does later also say, you know, I hear the dwarves are very hospitable, you know. So, yeah, the, the, yeah. And, and again, like, I, I don't necessarily hate the, the joke. I just wish that they would have a positive moment with the this this dwarf as well i really do appreciate it like i mean they they apparently did hire an actual dwarf actor you know and he's yeah he's played several other things where his height is you know like just have you know actually i think it you know would it would it be funny if you know she thought he was grumpy and he was actually a really happy person or something you know but just as it is, you know, yeah, we're we're laughing at off, oh, you know, dwarves in the real world aren't like dwarves in fairy tale, but you still use a dwarf actor as a prop, you know. And uh, yeah, really not a fan of the. He's even in in the end, uh, in the IMDb credits at least, possibly based on the end credits. All right, and it's Edmund Lindek, R.I.P. Um, damn, grew to be 90. Um, Beaver Dam, that's what I meant. The, the, um, yeah, um, yeah, he's done 
other comedy roles, and he's, yeah, he, he was incredibly funny. You know, he's, his character is listed as derelict old man, you know, and it's just, it's this idea that homeless individuals are inherently untrustworthy and dangerous and, you know, and you could so easily have had, like, this... This movie came out after the the first two um, Home Alone movies, where you also have you know someone who is like seen by a naive character as as you know oh you know they they judge them based on their appearance, but then you know we actually the the movie does end up having empathy for them. They could easily have done that here. You know, like, you could have had a thing where the, the like, Robert saw an, an unhoused individual and was like, oh, dangerous. And then, you know, Giselle actually talks to him and you see that, oh, he's, he's just a human being, you know. And here, that's, yeah, it's not what they do and they easily could have. I, just, I don't think it should have been in there. Like, even if you needed, like, oh, she, she has to lose her crown somehow. Have her drop it into something, or you know, yeah, like just it, it's really not necessary to target unhoused individuals who are already, you know, there's so much they they have very little power, sadly, and are you know, there's there's laws made to punish them for being unhoused as if they intentionally did it. You know, we need more laws punishing rich people for their, you know, when they do something wrong. Because they have no excuse. They are rich. They don't have to do anything wrong. Although, they did something wrong to get rich. But they could make, they could try to make up for it by donating the money. Anyway, the, um, let's see. Then we have the, yeah, uh, we see, um, Robert dealing with a divorce, and I do appreciate, because at, at first I was a little worried, that, oh, are they going to make it, like, oh, the woman's so unreasonable. No, they're, they're both unreasonable. They're both being ridiculous. They're both, they're arguing over a baseball card, you know, and, and yeah, yeah, Robert, like, outright says it out loud, you, this is what this is about. You're, you're getting mad at, about a, a baseball card, you know, it's completely ridiculous. And, you know, quite the, the contrast from the storybook wonderfulness that Giselle is used to, though she hasn't met him yet. And this is also just the thing for, like, sometimes parents, sometimes they mean well, sometimes they really don't make the right choices. Morgan asked for a book of fairy tales, and Robert gives her a book full of dead women to, like, for sure, inspiration is important, but, yeah, like, it, I don't, I'm not sure she's quite old enough to learn about radiation poisoning, you know, I only mention it because the movie does, but that's, yeah, you know, and that is again. That's as as far as they can can go. That that in two thousand seven, you can get away with a joke like that on a PG. You know, you don't have because you know if he had described the symptoms, it would have ended up PG thirteen or even R. But but yeah, um, important important to to inspire. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, that scene is like Disney, the Disney Corporation, almost making fun of. People who are like, oh, you know, we want like really positive role models for, for young girls. Let's see, and yeah, Giselle yet again falls. You know, clearly just yeah. If there's someone there to catch her, you know, if if there's a, a man th that she'll end up that she might end up with there to to catch her, she will fall. Even you know, she seemed to be doing fine standing there before, or not. Not the overall situation, but her balance. And I do really appreciate that at the end, it's not a man saving a woman. It's actually she saves uh, Robert. 
and let's see. The, yeah, um, they have some great jokes about how the dress is so big and impractical, both in 2D animation and in the real world. It's just ridiculous. And again, it is this thing of, you know, I'm not sure there's any classic Disney anime, you know, none of them have a dress quite that big, but some of them are, you know, excessive. Let's go with. And the... Uh, Um, yeah, um, Morgan immediately prefers Giselle to Nancy, you know, this, in part, this thing of, you know, yeah, this is the, the, you know, she stepped right out of a fairy tale. And then Morgan has the fascinating line, I think she might be a real princess. You mean like Diana, who was, you know, very popular in 2007? Like, wow, Americans just really don't look outside of America, do they? I mean, holy crap. Like, because that right there, like, you know, you want her to, to aspire to be, you know, a, uh, an inspiration to people. She likes princesses. Yeah, like, you know, the, the, um, the, um, let's see. Wait, okay, I was, I was half asleep during research, apparently, because, no, yeah, Diana had died ten years prior. Yeah, but there was, like, a, a, there was a British princess in 2007. The, the, there still is. Yeah, uh, okay, disregard what I said about Diana, obviously, other than that she was a... Yeah, he likes dead people to inspire his daughter, she likes princesses, meet halfway, tell her about Princess Diana, you know, a real inspiration, like, truly. I have very little love for almost any royal, you know, individual at all, but Diana was really a, an inspiration. You know, when when we on the far left talk about, you know, if you're powerful, you can do something good. Yeah, Princess Diana, that's, you know, yeah, some of the, you know, yeah. Look to her if you're, if you're wondering what we're on about. And, yeah, um, Edward and Pip go through the, the portal. And Pip, in real life, can't talk, so has to, you know, yeah, act out. Very fun. Some really great moments there. And, and yeah, um, I 100% believe that Robert, being single, or uh, not, not quite single, but not having, you know, she, Nancy doesn't live with him yet at this point. His place is a mess. Like, it, it's, like, cartoonishly, like, holy crap, you really need help with, you know, the maid's been here. But, yeah, she, you know, Giselle takes one look at that and is like, gotta tidy up. You know, that's another place where, you know, the spectrum coding comes in this thing of, you know, we have to do the, the yeah, trying to, you know, not, not everyone on the spectrum is, is neat and tidy, but there is an, a, a dedication to, to carrying out certain tasks. And, yeah, they it's literally happy working song. That's the, the, the chorus and the title is happy working song, because that, that is what it is, and it's, yeah, it's, it's like the, the um, hi-ho, hi-ho, off to work we go, and, you know, yeah, very, very... Nicely done there, and uh, let's see. Then we have the um, yeah, and and again, you know, Spectrum. She has so little, you know. She she doesn't think anything of him. Like she doesn't. She didn't lock the the bathroom door before taking a shower, and the the yeah, you know, she doesn't think. 
anything of them being so close before the yeah but yeah some some really great moments in the the tidy up you know the the whole thing of you know she can attract animals just like in andalasia but it's new york so it's pigeons rats and cockroaches that she attracts you know and they help clean up you know they do still do exactly what you know and then when he sees it you know Mor yeah morgan sees it wakes him up and you know they they get the animals back out of there and let's see yeah, and Nancy ends up thinking that Robert is with Giselle, and let's see, you know, and and again, the this thing of like Giselle didn't even realize that that would be how this was perceived at all. You know, she helps you know mend things later when she understands, <laughs> and she made a dress out of the curtain. Because that's, yeah, again, you know, if, yeah, the, the, um, let's see, I guess that is primarily Cinderella, you know, making a dress out of just, you know, finding, yeah, taking fabric that, that is available and, and making a, you know, a, a big dress out of that, so, yeah, and let's see. Um, yeah, um, I like when, yeah, Edward attacks a bus thinking it's a troll. And then we have, you know, so really the, the African Americans who appear in this tend to be, you know, there's the, the couple getting divorced and they do, you know, at first they're, they're like verbally aggressive with each other, but later on they do get back together and, you know, Divorce does bring out bring out the worst in people, so it's not just I. I just kind of I wouldn't have minded if there was also just at least one. You know, yeah. It 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 tends to be when when white men are angry in the movie. It tends to the the movie tends to say you know oh they really have reason to be angry, but the the these two people getting divorced, uh, you know, they're, they're arguing over a baseball card. It's, um, it's patently ridiculous. You know, why would you care? Uh, you know, how are, how is this something you're getting that upset about? Uh, you know, so, you know, for, for example, yeah, when Robert gets mad at Giselle, you know, it's, it's because she keeps doing things that in modern day New York are unacceptable. See and and yeah, the the bus driver also you know black woman gets angry. I think they might just be going for you know big city bus drivers are angry, but yeah, it does end up coming across as oh you know black women are are angry and yeah you could have had like there is some positive you know the the African American uh, well I don't want to assume the the people of color in the the park Cent Central Park maybe. You know the musicians do. You know they're they're not angry, but again, that's like so. So either you know you're you're a happy musician, or you're angry if you're a person of color, according to this movie. You know this is just not a great yeah. Um, let's see. But then we have the um, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Giselle is used to, you know, you can just, if you find water, you can just, you know, you can drink it. You know, that, again, that is true in these animated Disney, you know. So, yeah, she's, she sees this, this, uh, what's it called again? Fish aquarium, I guess it's called, you know. And, yeah, assumes, oh, this is, you know, this is okay for me to drink. And accidentally gets a fish in her mouth and spits it out and does a smile. It's just... Yeah, she's not like, ah, that was unpleasant. Just not, nothing can really get to her, at, at this point, at least. And let's see. And then we have the... Um, yeah, we see um, Queen Nerissa appear in Surface of Water. And considering that it wouldn't be impossible 
for her and Nathaniel to just find places that had water where he could be alone, you know, like, go go to a, a bathroom, pour some, some water in a, a glass from the, the faucet, and use that, you know, but no, they keep finding public places, so he's, you know, he's talking to the, the, the pot, and the, the shit, and, and, you know, he's like, oh, yes, my queen, and, and someone takes a, a bit of, because it's like soup or something, my queen, where are you, you know, that's, that's legitimately funny, and yeah, he gets the three poisoned apples, and, and yeah, very nicely done, you know, that tells us there really are only these three chances, there are the, the, you know, and, and yeah, you know, point, a crone offering a poisoned apple, again, Snow White, let's see, and, so, you know, yeah, the, the world that Giselle comes from is the world of these animated Disney fairy tale adaptations, and in that world, Crones use poisoned apples, you know, that's just how it goes. And... The, let's see... Uh, yeah, I, yeah, and Pip catches Nathaniel with the apples. He, you know, he heard every word. So, you know, yeah, from, for the rest of the movie, Nathaniel has to prevent Pip from preventing him from preventing Giselle from, you know, getting back with, with Edward, and Edward is so clueless that he does not, like, Pip's charades are actually quite, like, yeah, I think if I only saw that scene, I would be able to pay, put together what he's, con you know, conveying, but, yeah, Edward, you know, doesn't at all understand. Let's see, and... Um, yeah, then we have this thing of the, um, yeah, uh, Giselle, you know, is, is trying to be nice, and, you know, oh, in the real world, you can't be, in, in a big city, in a modern world, you can't be nice, that's a bad thing, and, and yeah, you know, she tries to, to, you know, encourage the, the two, who are getting divorced from, you know, yeah, she tries to, tries to encourage them to see beauty in each other and gets, you know, gets legitimately upset and very surprised when they are, you know, when she learns they're, they're separating. And yeah, then we get the thing about, you know, oh, you're in love with someone you've known for one day, and, you know, Lindsay Ellis already covered this, so I'll just reiterate, that isn't actually, this, trope of, oh, you know, they got married after knowing each other for one day. That isn't actually said in the animated Disney classics. Like, th that's something that people put upon them, and it became repeated so much that people started acting like, oh, I guess it's in the movie, and it really isn't. Like, again, I, I watched them, you know, some of these I watched months ago. You know, I, I think the oldest was maybe a year ago by now. It's not in there. They they don't say the next day they got married. They just say they met and they got married. That doesn't mean that there wasn't a period of time where they got to know each other before doing so. You know, we, we got to be careful not to let negative... You know, it, it was made up by people who didn't like these movies and were looking for things... Like, I already mentioned, there are things to criticize about them. But that isn't one of them. That's not in there. If, if you watch one of those movies and you think, what, they got married the next day? That's on you. That's you reading into it. That's not in the movies. So, yeah, when, when this movie brings it up and, and makes a big stink about it, you know, it does feel, you know, it's playing to, this was a time when there was a lot of backlash against the animated classics. And, you know, the movie is you know, trying to, trying to reverse course a little bit and trying to play into it. And then we have, the, yeah, I, you know, them talking about dating is legitimately sweet. And, yeah, the, 
you know, she tries to, to break into song. And he's like, uh, maybe, maybe we don't need to sing. We're in public. And, you know, yeah, she does manage to get others. In, and, and by the end, there's like dozens. There's a massive crowd of all different kinds of people dancing and singing, you know. And, and yeah, you know, again, it's, it's in part a parody. But it is true. You know, it's a, it's a good thing to show, to, to convey to the person that you love that you love them. And it's just so sweet when the, you know, there's a bunch of, like, senior frickin' citizens and, and the men, you know, bring out flowers and hand them to the women and they're like, oh, you know, swoony. It's just so sweet. Like, the... the Anyone who at that age can still be really romantic with their partner. It's just, it's so sweet. I I realize it doesn't end up that way for everyone, but, you know, it's work. It's hard work to get to that point, but it's rewarding. And, and for some people, it just doesn't end up that way, you know, even if you do work, sadly. And, yeah, um... Robert is the only person who's like not, you know, he's he's very slow to join in, and and show joy. You know, he's the last person to when when everybody gets up and and claps, he's like, you know, the last one. He's, which is a good, you know, it's showing us it's still difficult for him. He is very very jaded, and by the end of the movie, he does, you know, have strong romantic love for her. And, yeah, I love the thing with the, so, yeah, one of the apples, you know, she's offered, yeah, not, a, one quick thing, not a big fan of Nathaniel doing these weird accents, like, again, it's supposed to make the, the kids giggle, and like, that's a funny way to speak, and it's like, some people do actually have that accent, that's not, you shouldn't make fun of that. You know, but, but, yeah, um, he tries to, you know, it's, it's, what was it, it's, candy apple day you know and and nathaniel not realizing like if he said you know just you know it, i don't know what stuff like that costs a buck maybe you know just one dollar you know there's some chance that robert would be like okay but this is the last time you know he like he he let's see is this before or after he gives her at least a little bit of money and she gives it to the to the elderly woman i, I forget but you know but yeah, Nathaniel doesn't know that, so he claims, oh, it's it's free, and tomorrow something else will be free. And that, you know, Robert is like, this is New York, nothing's free, you know, there's no way. So just, yeah. And the, yeah, it, the apple gets, let's see, yeah, it's because she, she gets, you know, an, annoyed with him, so she, like, sticks her arms out, and the apple goes flying, and it lands, you know, because of the caramel, it sticks to the top of, of the, the biker's helmet. Yeah. And, and you know, and we see not long after that it was, like, acid, you know. So the, the it, it ate through the helmet, and, and there's, like, a bald spot where it's just, like, that's legitimately funny. And it's, like, I forget, was one of them actually outright acid, or is that... Certainly, in in nine to five, the the movie, there the there's it's it's actual acid in the, but I don't think it was in in one of the original animated ones. There, I think it was more like poison, not actual acid. But yeah, that again, you know, if you if you push it just a little further, you end up with something that ridiculous, you know, and. Um, yeah, and then we see, you know, Nancy does love romance, and when he, you know, when, when, yeah, it was basically Giselle doing it, but, you know, it's in Robert's name, so she, you know, Nancy thinks, oh, Robert, you're much more romantic than I, th I thought, you know, which, you know, apparently, uh, they're not, not every single woman does love big romantic gestures, some, you know, so just, you know, communicate. If if you're dating a woman and you're not 100% sure, communicate. The, if, you know, if she says no, you know, try to... If, yeah, maybe maybe ask some... Maybe ask her friends if you're... If you feel like, oh, maybe she's saying no 
because on some level she doesn't feel comfortable asking for it, you know, but yeah, obviously in a lot of cases no means no. And let's see, the especially things where I'll yeah, we'll we'll yeah. I, t I said I was going to make this PG, so I'll just say, when it comes to stuff you'll tell them about when they're older, no means no. And the, let's see, yeah, I like that, um, Edward thinks that the TV is a magic mirror, that's kind of, and, and it does provide him the information that he was looking for. And, right, and, and yeah, um, Nathaniel watches some of a, a soap and recognizes, you know, his relationship with Nerissa in there. And see, yeah, and and you have this thing, you know, do you like yourself? What's not to like? Wow. Yeah. Um, Edward is so self-obsessed and clueless. You know, he really does need to to grow before he'll be a good king. But I can see, I could definitely see Nancy bring out. You know, she's a very you know, yeah, I, I believe she, she could do it. She's clearly smart. But, but yeah, you know, like, Pip is trying to, to convey stuff to, to Edward, and he just does not understand. You know, you think I'm beautiful when I sleep? And just, yeah. And... Yeah, and at one point, there is literally an old Disney thing on TV. There's like a... Um, ventriloquist dummy saying I don't like sad endings or something like that uh, it's from the it's the it's the one with Mickey Mickey Mouse and the Beanstalk thing it's part of an anthology film and let's see yeah um, very cool when Pip manages to zip line you know it, and it is this thing of like as as you know obviously in real life we should do what we can to, to help them, but when you see in a piece of fiction someone disadvantaged make make the disadvantage work for them, yeah, it is inspiring, you know, like uh, Nathaniel thinks, oh, this will stop Pip, I'll, I'll, you know, crucify him, basically, and, and put him in this thing, and, you know, the, the, what's it called, the, um, ah, crap, what's it called, clothes hanger, I guess it's called, yeah, you know, but, yeah, I, actually, I think, is that, like, an, an ableist trope, this thing of, oh, you know, this person is even stronger with the, yeah, that might not be the best, I honestly, I, I need to, to educate myself more on disability, you know, issues, I, it's, I've recently learned more, but I still need to learn more. Um, let's see. And it is very charming that Giselle is such a big fan of Robert's close-up magic, and it's also just, yeah, you know, it's it's nice when you can do something that makes someone else smile like that, you know. it's it, Robert isn't used to making people smile, other than maybe Nancy, hopefully, and, and maybe Morgan, but uh, hopefully, but the... not in the same way, but the... the yeah, you know, divorce attorney, you know, and and I like them talking about, you know, this is a nice place, and we're talking, is this a date, you know, and, or no, I mean, my kid's right over there. And, yeah, and they do talk about Morgan's mother, and, yeah, I do really appreciate this thing of, you know, because, yeah, in real life, sometimes relationships fall apart. I, I really appreciate that they don't, like, make it out to be, oh, you know, the, the Morgan's mother was this horrible woman. And, let's see. Yeah. And then Nathaniel tries with an apple teeny, which, you know, and I love this little thing of, like, you know, Robert's like, that's poisoned. Well, oh, oh, you were joking, right? Just, yeah. You know. And, and, yeah, you know, comes very, very close, but Pip does manage to help matters, and 
and Nathaniel throws the pizza, thinking this will take care of Pip. And there's like, you know, big explosion. And people are like applauding, and he's like, I didn't know people could like when I did stuff, you know? It's and and that's part of how he ends up doing the right thing by the end. You know, love a good redemption arc. And yeah, um Giselle explains, you know, Pip actually helped and she has this very interesting retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. And, you know, Morgan's like, that's not how I heard the story. And just, I was like, yeah, really, you know, Red tells it a bit different, you know. T you know, t tomorrow we'll rent that documentary, Hoodwinked. You'll see. And let's see. Um, right, and the, yeah. So Edward gets the, the yeah the answer about you know where you know the the yeah the the corner of the you know was it 116th and Broadway or something like that you know hugs the the TV as we all should and and heads there and you know yeah goes knocking on different doors and like the the yeah you know various funny responses and you know. One one woman like opens the door and she's got like several kids. And she's like, "You're too late." <laughs> you know, it's like if you gotten here, you know, some years ago, maybe. But you know, happily married, got kids. You know, not gonna yeah. And you know, like one of the places he knocks, like we don't even like see, and nobody like opens the door or anything. But there's just like this aggressive barking from inside. You know, and so yeah, you know. Conservative, not even a dog owner, just a conservative. You know, frankly, Edward is very lucky that he, you know, he got away from there before the guy got out his gun. And yeah, then we have this homophobic joke where, like, you know, Edward knocks on one door, the door opens, and you know, the guy smiles, and we're clearly supposed to think, oh, he's into Edward, and Edward is like, well, embarrassed and, and walks away. And again, like you. You could have had a gay character there without this kind of homophobic thing, you know, like, the, the, um, yeah, just, just have, like, the, the, um, yeah, you know, you could, you could have him, like, smile at Edward and, like, imply interest, and maybe Edward say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have somebody else, and then the guy could say, it's okay, so do I, and, you know, maybe we see a, a you know, yeah, and then from inside we hear someone's, you know, who is it, honey, or something like that, you know, and, and the voice clearly be male, you know, you don't have to make it, because, like, the implication is that Edward doesn't want this guy to be attracted to him, and, you know, oh, you know, imagine being a straight guy and having a gay man attracted to you, and you don't, you know, yeah, doesn't, didn't, you know, do, does not have to be like that. Let's see. You know, that's it's it's fascinating. The only you know, when when misogynists look at like men who are like aggressively pursuing someone else, the only way that a male misogynist thinks that's a bad thing is if they're a competitor of his or if that man is gay. You know, if it's a male misogynist who's like way too aggressive in pursuing a woman I mean, that's just, that's apparently, according to them, how things are supposed to be, you know. Like, we should all be willing to take no for an answer. That has nothing to do with whether you're straight or LGBTQ. Let's see. And cis, yeah, the whole... Let's see. And, and it's not actually, you know, there, we have a much bigger problem with male misogynists not taking no for an answer from women than, you know, gay men not taking no for an answer from straight men. And, let's see. When, when, yeah, I like when Giselle points out to, to Robert, you know, is no the only word you know? No, 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 I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was a, a nice little, because, like, he's trying... He's trying to express, I know other words than no, 
But in doing so, he's saying no over and over again. And, and she's right. He's constantly saying no to things. And let's see. Yeah, and we see, you know, she feels negative emotions for the first time. She's actually really angry at him and is like, wow, that, that felt interesting. That was, a, you know. And that is basically, like, when Giselle and Edward finally meet back up, you know, later, yeah, here near the very end of the movie, Giselle has grown and Edward really hasn't. Edward is acting the exact same as he did in Andalasia, and Giselle has, you know, is, is more New York by that point, so they don't completely, and, and she's also developed feelings for Robert. And, you know, he does try to help her, so it's not just, you know, she sees a man, she immediately falls for Not anymore, at least. And, yeah, she made a, a dress out of the rug. And, let's see, yeah, and, and now there's no duet, which, you know, yeah, Edward is very, you know, it's, why aren't you singing? I'm thinking. Thinking? And let's see. And I appreciate, like, you know, that could easily have come across as, like, women shouldn't think, but it comes across more as, like, thinking. What does that mean? I've never thought, you know. Let's see. And <laughs> do you think poison apples grow on trees? That is a fantastic line. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, you have the line, everybody has problems, that doesn't mean you should give up. Which, that is legitimately a good message, you know, and that is something that you see across a number of Disney animated stories. And, yeah, so, if Giselle is going to go on a date, you know, gonna, gonna need help. I don't know where to find a fairy godmother this hour. I love the implication that it's like, if I, you know, if I had known, you know, a, a day or two ago that I was going to need a fairy godmother, I, you know, I, I, I know where to look, obviously. I may be in New York, I may be in a world that I don't fully understand. I know how to find a fairy godmother, but at this hour, you know, that's, yeah, quite appreciate that. And, yeah, um... Morgan busts out the American Express. And then we have this thing of, which again, you know, a joke for the, yeah, joke that hits different, depending on your age. Um, when the kids hear, boys only want one thing, but the adults won't tell me what that one thing is yet, you know, yeah, the kids are like, I know, right? What What is the deal with that? And the adults are like, yeah, you are definitely not finding out that until... I'm ready for you to find out, kind of thing, you know, so, yeah, that was, uh, let's see, and, um, yeah, um, Narissa goes into the, the real world and stops some cars, Day the Earth Stood Still style, and I, I do like, you know, so, yeah, um, Robert and Nancy are dancing, and Giselle says, I thought you couldn't dance. I said I didn't dance. I never said I couldn't. Which, you know, yeah, the, the very true, you know, too many young men unwilling to dance. If, like, if she asks, if you're, if you're into a girl and she asks, make the effort. You know, she's not doing it to make you feel bad. She's doing it because, she, you know, it would be a positive experience for, for both of you if you at least try. That's like, I've seen so many young men be like, oh, women are just impossible. A lot of young women, like, if you make an effort, they appreciate that. You know, the, the honestly, if you're finding that over and over women are, you're, you're finding it impossible to make a woman happy, I don't think it's because you're, fine. you know, it's because all women are, are impossible to, it, you know, maybe you're finding yourself attracted to, like, yeah, they exist, there are, you know, it's just not the majority, and maybe there's also something else you're doing that's making, you know, it's, it's this thing of, like, you know, male massages, they 
refuse to listen to what women, they, they don't want to understand women, and then they turn around and say, women are such a mystery. I've never learned how to read, and now I can't, you know, I, I open a book and it's like, what is this? Like, yeah, obviously, you have to make an effort. Let's see, and then we have the... Um, um, yeah, um, Robert does sing a, a little, and Sarandon in, in live action as the crone, like, you know, not a fan of this thing of, you know, oh, if, if a woman is ugly, it means she's evil, but they did do fantastic makeup, the, the teeth, and, and also the thing she keeps doing with her tongue is, I'm not gonna imitate it, don't worry, but, uh, you know, yeah, just, she she does fantastic. Like, Susan Sarandon, she's also incredibly capable of being super appealing in movies, you know, so just, it's, yeah, it's it's cool to see her play a role like this where, you know, she just completely, you know, yeah, she does, the, the way she talks and, and the, the way she moves, you know, it's, she she makes a lot of decisions that are, meant to make us think, ah, you know, ugh, I don't want, you know, that's, that's scary kind of thing, and yeah, absolutely nails it. But, but yeah, you know, fantastic makeup and acting, you know, she carries herself different from the rest of her, Queen Narissa. And then we have the thing, you know, it has to be before 12, so, like, Cinderella with the, um, yeah, the various magic and yeah um she does take a bite of the apple because she wants to forget and the apple rolls which also you know it rolls much further but i believe did the apple also roll after the bite in snow white i think so i i if I, it's familiar at least the the image of an apple rolling and then we have of course have the thing with the the kiss and yeah, you know, it's, a lot of us in the audience guessed that the movie would end with Giselle and Robert, not Giselle and Edward, being together. You know, basically as soon as Robert caught her, and it's like, you know, it's supposed to plant in the young audience's mind, oh, maybe maybe it's better if she's with him, or kind of thing. F you know, for the rest of us, it's like, she's going to end up with him. But I don't think that's such a, a bad thing. Slightly creepy that Edward keeps trying to kiss her after the first kiss. But like again, I get what they're going for, but it's just like it's already creepy to kiss someone who's not conscious. Let's see, and yeah, but yeah, uh, Robert kisses her and she comes back, and Narissa turns into a dragon. So again, we're very much in like Maleficent territory. Very, very cool, and I honestly kind of love that the dragon, like, still very humanized, and, and the mouth can form words, and she's, she's talking just like normally, you know, and, you know, yeah, threatens to kill everyone, starting with, uh, you know, the, the, yeah, the protagonist, so... You know, it's clear she has to be stopped. And we have the thing of, you know, Giselle takes off her, her shoes to so she can run better. And she leaves just one slipper. So again, you know, Cinderella reference. Very nicely done. And, and afterwards, you know, Edward picks it up and puts it on Nancy. Again, you know, yeah, another Cinderella reference. And... See, then we have the. Um, what did I write? I have no idea. Oh, right, right. The the. Um, yeah, yeah. Pip returns, and then we have the. Um. um Oh, right, right, yeah. Uh, Robert falls, and, you know, Giselle also falls some, and they save each other. I really appreciate that 
it's not a man saving a woman here at the end as it is in a lot of these and let's see yeah and at the very end you know um Giselle is working in clothing and making you know pretty princess dresses that you know are clearly very popular and Robert is helping with that he's no longer working seemingly no longer working as a divorce attorney you know so he's trying to make people happy instead of helping divorce happen you know it's not that divorce is not gonna like you know me personally I think couples counseling would have been a better but you know that's not yeah I appreciate that that's that's not what they were that's not what they went with that's fine. Um, and, and I like that bo both Nathaniel and Pip wrote a book and are now signing it and, you know, very popular. And, yeah, because, you know, they, they kind of both returned as, as heroes. They both, you know, Nathaniel was a villain for, a, or the right hand of a villain for a while, but ended up doing the right thing when it really counted. And also, you know, when Nerissa is a dragon, we have a thing that's very similar to the the troll at the start you know the the branch thing you know and in because it's New York it's not a, it's not a branch it's a tall building with like a spire or whatever you call those things and yeah you know it ends up being Pip that helps defeat the the dragon and you know Americans love an underdog story so not a huge surprise there but it was still nice to see you know basically like Pip if you don't go out of your way to restrain Pip, Pip is gonna really, you know, take care of business. Like, he spends almost the entire movie with Nathaniel slowing him down and, and you know, preventing him from doing stuff. But as soon as he gets completely free, there's a dragon there and he just easily defeats. Not like anti-climax easily, but easily. And, but, but yeah, really appreciate, you know, Nathaniel realizing, you know, I, I've been doing the wrong thing for someone who doesn't even really care about me. And that is something that, you know, it's not quite to that extent. You know, most of us don't go poisoning people, but sometimes you find yourself in life thinking, you know, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? You know, am I trying to impress someone that, you know, and in this movie, it's, you know, trying to impress a woman that doesn't really love him. In real life, a lot of the time, if a young man does something really terrible, it's to impress another guy or a group of guys to fit in or, or some, you know. But, yeah, um, I don't think I had anything else. So, yeah, um... This is the end of the video. Let me out in the comments. What is your favorite, like, postmodern, you know, exploration of, of fairy tale tropes? Doesn't have to be a movie, doesn't have to be about Disney interpretations of fairy tales, but just, you know, let me know wh which one you especially think is great. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. Drop the I'm getting really good at dropping the the keyboard. I, I don't I don't want to brag. I'm not saying I deserve a room medal or something, but I'm pretty sure I'm 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 nailing it. I'm I'm blowing away the competition. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One to more links to stuff like relevant playlists. They suggest a video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiled thoughts on a movie. One talking about a horror thing. I am early in season two of Ash vs. Evil Dead right now. I try to do a daily of a Marvel TV show. I am near the very end of season five of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I do drop the keyboard again. I, I do them in the order that they originally aired, more or less. I, I try to. I did already do all the, the Netflix ones um, before these. I also try to do a weekly one on Star Wars. So, you know, right now it is The Bad Batch, Season 3, which I'm loving. Um, let's see. And, yeah, starting next week, apparently, if I understand correctly, 
X-Men 97, so that's going to be really, really good. Um, and, and yeah, just in general, you know, I try to do current stuff when it's like MCU and Star Wars and such. Um, and I think those are all the different, there's, it's quite a list by this point. Recently reviewed thoughts videos to them out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching recording. I'll catch you next time. If you'll excuse me, I'm off to start a massive musical number in a park. Wish me luck.